Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Paul's Church Online. My name is Matt Skillen. I'm one of the pastors here, and we are just overwhelmed with joy that you've joined us for this online worship service. You might be joining us live here at 8.30 on Sunday morning, or you might be catching us on demand on YouTube uh, at any time, wherever you are, whenever you are. We hope that this is uh, an opportunity for you to connect with us here, and we're, we're so glad that you that you are. Hey, as you're joining us online right now, we invite you to go to our website at wearesaintpauls.com. We are stpauls.com, all spelled out, uh, by the way. It is a great place to learn more about what's happening in the life at St. Paul's Church. Uh, I would encourage you to click the connection card link. It's right there at the top of the page. Uh, the connection card link is a way that you can share any information that you're willing to share. It's where you can uh, share a prayer request with us if you'd like to on our website. We love to know how God is working and moving in your life and how we can be praying for you. So we hope that you'll join us there. You'll share a little bit of information with us so that we can connect and remain connected with you. You know, I, I run into people throughout the week in different uh, places all around uh, Elizabethtown and in the surrounding community. And I know that a number of our friends who join us online uh, really consider this their church home. And we are so thankful for that, that you join us uh, routinely uh, to, to connect with our church. Uh, you are part of this church. We are all together in community of faith, growing together. And we thank you for joining us here. Hey, as you're joining us online, we hope that you'll also comment in the video below. Uh, this gives us an opportunity to interact with you perhaps live in the service, but it also uh, gives us an opportunity to share information with one another for our deeper dive segments. If you drop a comment, whether live or after the fact, when you're watching it on demand, we receive those comments and we would love to know if you have any questions that we can cover as part of a deeper dive. Deeper dive is the segment after the service where we engage with your questions and, and converse with one another about what the message might be saying to each of us and, and how we can apply it to our lives. So join us immediately after the service for Deeper Dive, the segment after the service. Uh, Pastor Dominic today is going to be preaching in our series that we are continuing this week called Seven More Verses That Have Changed My Life. So each preaching pastor for the next few weeks is going to be pulling from scripture a, a passage that changed their lives in some way, which is a remarkable way to think about the, the power of God's word. In returning to God's word for our sermon series in this season here at St. Paul's Church, we are, we are revealing the true power and transformative nature that comes from reading God's Word. We hope that you're enjoying that as well. Do you have a, a life verse or a verse that has changed your life? We'd love to know more about that. You can drop it in the comments section or put it uh, in your connection card. We would love to know if there is a, a verse or a passage that has changed your life in God's Word. Maybe you are just starting out um, a Bible reading uh, habit or tradition in your and routine in your life, uh, and you don't know where to begin. Uh, I tell you, some of the places that I've loved looking into lately are the letters from Paul. So all of the New Testament's uh, uh, books like Galatians, Ephesians, uh, Romans. These are these are wonderful pas uh, passages of the Bible because they're letters written from a, a, a spiritual leader like like the Apostle Paul to new Christians. So I would invite you to take a look at that if that is a place that you would like to uh, to begin emerging to in your life. And you might be saying, "Hey, Pastor Matt, I don't have a Bible. Oh, that's okay. Uh, if you have a mobile phone or a, a computer that's connected to the internet." Uh, you can certainly find a free Bible online at Bible.com. This is the Bible app that uh, is is uh, is produced and maintained by our good friends uh, at Life Church in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, they are uh, making it a mission to make the Bible accessible to everyone around the world through translation and uh, access and, and publishing rights. They're a really great organization. We invite you to take a look at the Bible app if, you'd if you're looking for a way to engage uh, in God's Word. Well, as we continue our time together, it is, it is a, a bustle of activity uh, today at St. Paul's Church. You're going to be uh, you're hopefully uh, inspired by a number of special music performances as this is the final Sunday of the regular calendar year where our choirs and bell choir will, will uh, be, pre be pre performing and presenting in our worship services. They take a short summer hiatus and they come back up in August, but this is going to be sort of a celebratory send-off as we give our volunteers a break over the summer. So be expecting that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we also... Uh, are going to be uh, experiencing a time of communion this morning. So if you'd like to join us for communion, we invite you to gather some elements that you might uh, need, like a bread-like item. Uh, you might need a cracker or a cookie or a slice of bread. You'll need a cup-like item as well. That can be water or coffee or juice or milk, whatever you have, it's all okay. I invite you to, to take those elements and set them aside for a special time in the service where we, um, where we share communion together. And that'll be coming up a little bit later uh, in our service. Well, as we prepare now for a time of worship, let our hearts and minds be open to what God would say to us today. Uh, let's go in now for a time of worship.
morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. We are so glad that you're here. We have a wonderful worship service today um, that we're going to join together in song and music to celebrate and praise our Lord and Savior. As we get started this morning, let's just take a moment to unite our hearts as we greet those around us. And perhaps you'd like to say, I'm excited to hear you sing today to your neighbor. Please take a moment and greet each other. As we make our way back to our seats, let's sing together our opening hymn of praise, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. It's hymn number 89 in your hymnals, and we'll be here in the front on the screens as well. Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. be seated.
Let us now continue in one heart and one voice as we join together in our call to worship. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the king. For he has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Amen. Yeah. 
As we go before the Lord this morning in prayer, uh, we have some sad news to share. If you received Pastor David's special e-note yesterday, uh, you learned that Matthew Strasser, um, a 36-year member of St. Paul's Church, has gone home to be with Jesus. Um, if you also read in that note for the first time, I learned uh, of the unique uh, connection that Matthew Strasser had to this community of faith and to the greater Elizabethtown area. You see, through a Make-A-Wish Foundation wish, it was his wish that started a tradition here in Lancaster County the Mother's Day truck convoy. So as a, a moment that we take, uh, whenever a member goes home to be with the Lord, we take a moment of reflection. Would you join me in saying uh, prayerfully thank you for this uh, brother in Christ's impact on our community and in the lives of everyone that he knew. Would you join me in prayer? <laughs> Gracious God, in this moment of reflection, we say thank you for our brother Matthew. And as you welcome him into your loving arms, we pray for his family as they continue to grieve and mourn and move through the process of what it means to live life here on earth without him. Though, Lord, we know we will see each other again one day. We are reminded that through all things, you are shaping us and forming us into the people that you've called us to be. Let not this moment pass. Let it linger with us longer as we consider our impact and our contributions to your people, to your church here on earth. These things we pray in your gracious name. Amen.
Amen. Well, thank you again to all the music groups who are sharing with us in worship this morning. Uh, this marks uh, sort of the end of the season as they take a summer hiatus to give our volunteers a break. So we thank you so much for all the preparation that has gone into this Sunday and for all the many ways that you've blessed us through song. We really do appreciate that. Well, as we uh, continue our time together, allow me to say good morning and welcome once again to St. Paul's Church. Thank you for joining us today. We invite you to take a look at the connection card that's in the seat pocket in front of you. This connection card is a great way to connect with us and to share with us any information that you're willing to, to provide, as well as uh, any prayer requests that you would like us to lift up this week. We get connection cards that come in, of course, on Sunday mornings through our worship services, but also online through our website at wearesaintpauls.com. And uh, we, we so enjoy hearing from you, connecting with you and learning more about how God might be working in your life and how we can be praying for you. So we hope that you'll join us in using that connection card. We also want to make you aware that there are offering stations available in the lobby as you leave church this morning. If you brought a gift that you would like to share, uh, you can drop it in one of those offering stations. That's also a great place to put a connection card if you happen to fill one out during the worship service today. Well, we have a number of things happening in the life at St. Paul's Church today. You might have noticed if you came in from the office side uh, to worship this morning, we are are setting up for an outdoor worship service at 10:15 this morning. Uh, we hope that you can stay and join us if possible. Maybe you can in, uh, call and invite some friends or neighbors to join you as well. We'll have uh, folding chairs available. So if you forgot your blanket or your lawn chair, no problem. We got you covered. Uh, literally, I think there's going to be some shade from the big tree. So come on out if you can. Uh, it's going to be a great time, and we hope that you can stick around uh, to join us for that. Tonight at 6 p.m., Vacation Bible Camp takes off. We launched tonight with Stellar, our space theme, Vacation Bible Camp. This week we're anticipating uh, many children from the Elizabethtown area to join us, and we hope that you can continue to join us in prayer as we uh, move into a season where from Sunday to Wednesday we'll be welcoming a lot of people that might be hearing the gospel message for the first time. And equipping our volunteers has been something that our staff here has been doing a great deal of over the last several weeks. And in fact, we would like to take a moment to dedicate our volunteers that are in the service this morning. So many of them are wearing purple shirts. But if you're volunteering this year at Vacation Bible Camp, would you just take a moment and stand right where you are, please? Yeah, if you've got a purple shirt on, I'm looking right at you. <laughs> Oh, excellent. Some of you uh, don't have the purple shirts yet, and that's great. We will certainly make sure that you get one, but we are so glad that you are here this morning. If you would, please just remain standing while we say a prayer of dedication uh, for the work that you're about to embark on this week, this vitally important work. And if you are not standing at the time, but would like to, certainly talk to Colleen Reiner at the end of the service. She would love to tell you more about that. But at the same time, if you would, please extend a hand in, in, sim in a symbolic gesture as we symbolically lay hands and dedicate our volunteers for this time. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we thank you for every single person who has said yes to partner with St. Paul's Church during Vacation Bible Camp, to give our children of Elizabethtown a truly out-of-this-world experience, to engage with them in meaningful and helpful ways, to be the voice of your gospel in this moment. Heavenly Father, we pray for every volunteer. May they see great inspiration in their work. May they be well rested for the evening's activities that happen this week. Heavenly Father, may they be prepared and equipped to meet children right where they are, to be a voice of hope in their lives. Heavenly Father, we also pray for every child that is about to come to Vacation Bible Camp. Uh, may you spark in them a curiosity for your word. May they observe the great work that you have in, in their lives. May you equip them with a gospel message that they will share with their families and friends after they depart from St. Paul's Church Vacation Bible Camp. You have ordained every step in detail, Heavenly Father. And we pray right now that it is carried out with your will. These things we pray in your gracious name. Amen. Would you join me in thanking these volunteers? Amen.
Amen. As we now open up a time for uh, communion and reflection, would you join me in our prayer of confession? It will be on the screen in front. And please uh, join me in saying it. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And amen. And as we gather for the table of our sacrament, I invite you to take your blue-colored hymn books and turn with us to page 13. Page 13 in your hymnal. And let's join together in the section that's entitled, The Great Thanksgiving. Page 13, The Great Thanksgiving. Friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery of sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O Lord, on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. It was on the night that Jesus was betrayed that he did indeed take bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke that bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. And every time we gather in his name and do this meal, we celebrate the day when he will come again. Likewise, after the uh, supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. And he said, this is my blood of the new covenant shed for your sins and the sins for all. Take and drink. And as you do, do so in remembrance of me. And when we do, we remember the great redemption that comes in knowing the name of Jesus Christ. We invite you now to take the packets that you received coming into the sanctuary. If you did not receive a packet, if you would just raise your hand, one of our ushers will bring those packets to you. So feel free to raise your hand. There are some on the side, Tom, and on this side as well. Keep your hand up until you receive one of the elements. And if you're joining us online, this would be an excellent time to gather the elements that we've asked you to prepare ahead of time. We invite you now to open those packets and join with us as we share in this holy meal. We invite you, if you are 
uh, so comfortable and you are seated with people that you know uh, or relatives that are hopefully you know, um, we invite you to share the words that we have shared with you, the body of Christ broken for you. If you are sharing communion on your own today, remind yourself that this meal is for you as well, the body of Christ broken for me, the blood of Christ shed for me. Let's be in the spirit of communion. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you in communion, to reflect together on the great sacrifice that Jesus Christ made so many years ago, that we may, our sins may be covered in his blood, redeemed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you do, for all the work that you're doing in our lives, for the movement we can feel of your Holy Spirit moving through and around us every single day. We ask, Lord, that you let this time stay with us, as we continue down the path that you've put us on, moving towards the great uh, calling that you've had on each of our lives. This is your prayer in your gracious name, amen. Good morning. So good to see you all. Um, if we haven't met, my name is Dominic. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. I want to start off with a deep, profound theological question. You may find this personally challenging. Okay, so prefacing. Have you ever licked a rock? <laughs> Raise your hand if you are willing to admit to this. Oh, a couple people, nice, okay. It's not just me, thank you. So I wanna tell you a story. Back uh, when I was working on my associate's degree, uh, part of my requirements, I had to take two different uh, laboratory classes, science classes with a lab. Uh, the first one I went for, I was very excited about, it was Intro to Geology. Uh, I really enjoy geology. I've always collected rocks when I was a kid to the point where my mom made me p get rid of one if I brought another one home. Um, uh, we had gravel outside, so there was an endless supply of interesting <laughs> rocks. Uh, so. I was very excited about Intro to Geology, and uh, about halfway through the semester, we had one of our labs. Uh, our uh, professor split us up into teams of four. Each team was given a tray. Each tray had 40 different mineral samples with numbers, and you had a page that had 40 different 
names of minerals, and spaces to put numbers. You see how this works. Now, there's various ways that you can test to discern which mineral is which. Uh, colors, colorization, the, what's called uh, planes of cleavage, the different numbers of facets that the different minerals can have, uh, or none at all. Um, the hardness of the minerals, and you have different things to scratch the minerals on to see what will scratch and what won't. And through all of these and your notes, you can determine what each and every mineral on that tray is. And we work together as a team. We managed to work all the way down to two final samples. Let me just give you a picture here. <clears throat> One of those is halite, which is a salt. One of those is sylvite, which is related to salt, but because of some, something else in its composition, is very, very bitter. There's only one way <laughs> to figure out which is which. So I'm sitting there with uh, my lab partners, and we've worked our way through, and we've, we've got these two almost identical clear cubes. And we're looking at them, and they're, they've got almost exactly the same hardness. They've got everything. We determined there's only, one of us has to do it. Now I like salt. I do. Even as a kid, I put too much salt on my mashed potatoes. I took one for the team, and sadly, I did not lick the salt. <laughs> so just for clarification here, halite, sodium chloride, and sylvite, potassium chloride. So it's like very similar, but different enough. So yes, I have licked a rock. And if you're interested, uh, halite does taste like salt and sylvite doesn't. So, now that we've had our science portion of the morning, salt is uh, a fascinating uh, mineral. It's something that everyone needs. Animals, without ever having tasted pure salt, will go miles out of their way in search for salt. It's something that every warm-blooded creature needs. We need a certain amount of salt in our system. You know what I find fascinating? Our bones contain approximately 23% sodium, that's salt. Have you ever looked at a stick of celery and noticed, my, that kind of looks like a bone? No, I have. <laughs> celery sticks contain approximately 23% sodium. Isn't that interesting? Such similarities there. Our bodies need salt. Obviously, too much is a problem, as your doctor will tell you. But I'm here to tell you that the Bible says we can uh, put a little salt on there. We're in this series, uh, seven verses that can change your life. And here's one that changed mine. Salt of the earth. Have you heard that phrase? Salt of the earth. Uh, nowadays, it can even be almost a backhanded compliments. If you think back to the old days of bless their heart, salt of the earth, probably not the nicest or best of individuals, but salt of the earth, yeah, still good, still not at all what we're talking about here, just for a frame of reference here. We are in Matthew uh, chapter 5, verse 13. This is from the Sermon on the Mount. So Jesus has gotten up there. There's lots of people listening. He is giving his sermon here. He started with the Beatitudes. Blessed are the, enter the space. We've got a whole list of those. And then he rolls on and really seems to change the subject. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. I love this verse. I really do. This verse has a, a special place in my heart. Now, initially, it was just because of the salt, really. But I, I never really thought much beyond that until one day I learned a little bit more about the context 
the time at which Jesus is preaching. And this verse unlocked and changed the way that I think about myself. This verse changed the way I think about others in the church. This verse changed the way I think about the church. So yeah, this one changed my life. And it might do yours. You, I might get through this and you think, well, I already knew all of that. High five. You get to preach next week. Okay, good. Not really. Uh, don't worry. No pressure. See, salt is important to us, probably first and foremost, for the flavor. Salt is, I mean, if you taste salt, it's salty. We don't really have a better word to describe salt, except that it is salty. But salt is so much more than that. Have you ever tasted a piece of bread without salt in it? Surprisingly bland. Have you ever tasted a cake without salt in it? It just, it's off. It tastes weird. Have you ever tasted soup that had no salt in it? Might end up being very sweet, kind of, it's just, it's missing something. You see, salt, in and of itself, uh, I mean, you can only do so much with salt, which is salty. But when you add it to something, when you put it into a setting, specifically with cooking, it enhances. It brings out all of the other flavors to the point where you don't even realize you're tasting any salt at all because the salt has faded to the background of your palate and has brought forth all of the other flavors in greater strength. Salt enhances flavor. It's not just, you know, I'm someone who likes spicy things. I love spice. I love chili. I love things that make my nose run and my eyes water a little bit and a little bit of perspiration on my forehead. I love spice. But that's different than salt. Salt enhances all of the other flavors. Even if you have water that has been, it's, it's okay to drink. Like you've, You can check it. You, you might have boiled it. It's fine to drink, and it still doesn't taste very good. This might surprise you. Add a little salt. Stir that up. Just that little bit of salt can do so much to just make water, which most of us think of as relatively tasteless, taste somehow better. Salt enhances where it is added. But that's not immediately what you see Jesus saying. So let's expand on what Jesus is saying here to understand about the value of salt, the purpose of this here. He goes on right after this. It's a bit of a couplet in an, of an analogy. Uh, in verse 14, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Now, this is a couplet for a reason, because Jesus is making the same point. If you're in a dark room and you're trying to figure out where things are, the first thing you need to do is turn the light on. Illuminates. The light enhances what you see, much the way that salt enhances what you taste. See, salt adds flavor. It adds flavor. And you are the salt of the earth. You add flavor. Now, some of us are a little zestier than others. Some of us certainly bring about quite a bit of flavor. Once, when I was a kid, I, uh, I might have told this story before, and I do apologize if I repeat myself. I... Um, managed to wear four different patterns of plaid at the same time. And my mom let me leave the house. Now granted, my father was a professional clown, so I wasn't the weirdest thing walking out the door. 
but I had put on two pairs of pajama pants and rolled up the outer one to the knees so I could see the other pair, and then I put on two flannel shirts and rolled up the outer one up to the elbow, so four different, I was very proud of myself. A lot of flavor there. We are the salt of the earth. We are called to add flavor to our environments, our settings, wherever God sprinkles us. Work, school, uh, your neighborhood, at home, the grocery store, wherever you are in a day. Right now, we're all in here, so we're a salty bunch. So be nice to each other. Um, but continuing on there, Salt is actually quite important throughout the Bible for its usefulness. Not just as a way to enhance flavor, salt is incredibly valuable because it preserves. By adding salt to organic material, salt slows down and even halts decomposition. So at this time when Jesus is preaching, Salt would have been very valuable, obviously, because it makes things taste better, but also because it enables people to travel. They didn't have refrigeration. At the best, they had really interesting methods of uh, creating cool underground chambers to keep things as cold as possible. Some people even managed to make ice that way, which I'm still trying to figure that out looking at old schemat. Don't worry about it. If you wanted to travel, the only way to travel with food was to either have it be storable components like flour and oil, that can make you a basic bread, add some water to that, you've got something. But if you wanted protein, that was gonna go bad real fast, unless you salted it. By placing it into salt, the salt stops the decomposition. It preserves the freshness of food. Salt enabled people of all sorts to go places they never could reach before. Without it, they would never have made it. Salt was valuable because it preserves. And you see this all the way through the Old Testament. I'm going to jump back. Uh, we're going to look in the New King James Version. 2 Chronicles uh, 13, verse 5. Should you not know that the Lord God of Israel gave the dominion over Israel to David forever, to him and his sons by a covenant of salt? A covenant of salt. In fact, we can dig around and find reference after reference after reference in the Old Testament about salt being a part of worship. In the law of Moses, every single thing that was offered to God, if it was a burnt offering, if it was an animal offering, if it was a bread offering, if it was a drink offering, everything was supposed to have salt added to it first because salt preserves. You can trust salt to do its job. Salt isn't going to suddenly stop being salt. Salt is reliable trustworthy. It will always do what it does. Because of this, salt became a symbol of trust, of truth, of purity. And so, as we see here in Chronicles, God, the God of Israel, the Lord gave dominion over Israel to David forever. It's a covenant of salt. Salt preserves. Even in this metaphorical moment in the Old Testament, we're seeing salt being used as a sign of preservation, of continued freshness. Oh, forever. Forgot the point there. Yeah, it is. Salt preserves. So that means if you're the salt of the earth, you're also going to preserve freshness. I want to be clear. That does not mean you're dunked into formaldehyde and preserved forever because you can't eat that. Salt preserves freshness. We maintain food to be good. That's something that we are called to do. We're going we're to dig into all of that in a moment. But there's interesting there that 
God, through the prophets, said that he, through a covenant of salt, he promised David the kingdom forever, or his, to his, him and his sons. See, in Scripture, because of its preservative properties, it's a sign of covenant, even from the moment a child was born. In uh, Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 4, he references that babies, after they're born, they'd be cleaned up and then rubbed down with salt. And this was, this is a culture, uh, I'm sorry, this is a uh, ancient practice that many cultures today will still use. Babies born, clean them up, rub them with salt. Now for many, it's believed that uh, that, that can be good luck, things like that. I'm not really, I don't believe that in the, personally myself. For the Israelites, because salt was a sign of the covenant that they had made with God, to rub your child down with salt was to promise, to dedicate your child to the Lord, that you would raise your child in the law of Moses, in the way of the Lord. And since we're talking about newborn children, I couldn't pass up an opportunity to introduce you to my newborn child. Oh, wait, no, numbers. I did not write that in my notes. Whatever set aside from the holy offering, I'll just read this. Whatever is set aside from the holy offerings to Israelites, the Israelites present to the Lord, I give to you and your sons and daughters as your perpetual share. It is an everlasting covenant of salt before the Lord for both you and your offspring. So that's the law of Moses. Thank you. I forgot to add that to my notes, so I'm so glad I left that in my, my slides. Because again, we're seeing, even in the law, this, the evidence of salt here. Okay, an everlasting covenant there. There she is. Yeah. That's what I say every day. Uh, this is my third daughter. I have three girls. This is Willow. Willow Harmony Rose Tuttle. She is just over a month old now, and she's putting on weight every day. She's already growing out of her newborn clothes and pajamas. So everything you want a baby to do, she's doing just fine including waking up multiple times throughout the night. So if I doze off mid-sermon, I apologize. Sorry, that was literally just it. I just wanted to introduce, you know, newborn. I didn't rub her down with salt. <laughs> the nurses actually advised against that. So and since we're on new covenant, old covenant, it's okay. I, I, I felt all right about that. But yeah, that's Willow. <clears throat> Moving on. Sorry, it's my kid. I'm proud of my kids. <laughs> salt is a sign of a covenant. In the Old Testament, the salt was the sign of a covenant. And then we get to the New Testament, and here's Jesus saying, you are the salt of the earth. You are the sign of a new covenant. Because the covenant is working in our hearts and our lives. Not constant, just tradition. It's us. This building is not the salt of the earth. The cross even isn't the salt of the earth. We look at the cross and we recognize what it means to us, what Jesus accomplished there. But we are the salt. Each and every one of you is the salt. Say it with, if you'll repeat after me, I am the salt of the earth. I am the salt of the earth. Good. I just want to make sure you're following me on this. Good. Now, if you haven't guessed, I love the Bible and I love geology. So how did this verse change my life? It all happened when I discovered just how valuable salt was at this time. Salt wasn't super easy to come by. You either had to get a bunch of seawater and let it evaporate slowly and gather up the salt, or you had to dig. And if you find it, then you gotta mine it, and that takes time and energy, and it's hard work, and you don't have like jackhammers and modern tools like that. It's, Salt is not easy to come by. It was expensive. It was valuable. It was so valuable that a Roman soldier would be partially paid in salt. That payment of salt was called a salarium. It's where we get the word salary. It's where we get the phrase, worth their weight in salt. Salt is worth something. Nowadays, I mean, it's like less than a dollar for a big thing of... Uh, sodium chloride with a little bit of iodine in there, not super expensive, and your doctor tells you not to have too much. 
I mean, I, we could argue theologically that the uh, Bible says, you know, could probably have a little more than that, especially if it's added to every single offer. No, sorry, that's a sidetrack. Salt was valuable. And I know I have felt at times less than valuable. I felt small. I felt worthless, uh, not particularly uh, interesting, unique. I got nothing to offer. But to Jesus, salt is immensely valuable, provided it keeps doing what salt is meant to do. He does say, if you're not going to be salt, you get chucked out. Just a warning. We are the salt of the earth. So here's my challenge to you. First of all, remember how valuable you are. Because this is why this verse changed the way I see myself and the church. Salt is valuable, immensely worthwhile. That means you are immensely valuable. At least to Jesus. And if, I mean, who else should we care about in terms of their opinion? I care about Jesus' opinion. Jesus thinks you're valuable. Just sink that in for a moment. Jesus thinks I'm worthwhile. And not only that, he wants to add me to the recipe. Wherever God sprinkles you, at home, at work, at school, at uh, the grocery store, the library, anywhere you are, where God sprinkles you, enhance the flavor don't dominate and take over and say, you've got to do everything my way. That gets real obnoxious real fast. Enhance the flavor. Find out about people. Learn more about them. Encourage them. Celebrate them. Salt celebrates the other flavors that it's added to. Preserve. Don't come in and dunk things in formaldehyde and say, nothing can ever change. I know tr there's nothing wrong with tradition. Tradition is valuable. It connects us to centuries past. I love tradition. Ran out of breath on that one. I love tradition, but salt also preserves freshness. We're to keep things fresh so that they don't go moldy and growth. Keep it fresh. Wherever you are, spend time thinking, how is God wanting to keep this alive and active now, where I am? You're the sign of the new covenant. If you're not salty, then maybe you're not in the covenant, which is an kind of a scary thing to think about. There's your boring old table salt. Small, uninteresting, for us nowadays relatively cheap. But what you do with it matters. You are the salt of the earth. You are valuable. You enhance flavor. You add, you, you bring freshness. You keep things alive and worthwhile. You are the sign of the new covenant with Jesus. Jesus wants to use each and every one of us to bring flavor to our environments. So what does that look like? What does that, look, I always wanna have a challenge for you. What does it look like to take this and apply it? How is this going to actually change your life? Sure, you could change the way you think, but until you change the way you live, are you really changing that much? How are you going to change? You are the salt of the earth. Alter your setting. Wherever God sprinkles you, this week, this month, this year, wherever you are, bring the fruit of the Spirit. Bring joy. Bring peace. Bring kindness, gentleness. Demonstrate, show that. You're going to bring freshness into an environment. You're going to alter your setting to enhance what is already there. If you've got an environment that's contentious, come in with peace and gentleness. You'll change everything. If you come in, uh, someone has offended you, and instead of coming in all angry, you come in with grace and forgiveness, that completely changes the environment. That brings a little bit of heaven down to earth. If you've made a mistake, you've wronged someone, and you approach them in humility and ask forgiveness, you apologize. You are changing 
your world, one tiny little grain at a time. It's so easy and it's so hard to be the salt of the earth. Don't give up. Keep at it. Keep practicing. Pray every day, asking the Holy Spirit to grow the fruit of the Spirit within you because then you're bringing some of that saltiness into the world. Wherever God sprinkles you, be ready. Be ready to flavor. Be ready to keep things fresh. Be ready to live out the new covenant as a disciple of Christ. Pray with me now. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. The nice, clean breeze, the warm sunshine peeking through. And we can be out here enjoying your creation. Lord, you've put it into each of us to enhance our world, to preserve freshness and goodness. Lord, help each one of us, challenge each one of us. Holy Spirit, be whispering in our ears, showing us where to add a little bit of salt, add a little bit of flavor, and improve everywhere that we are. Lord, we trust you that you're with us and you make all this possible. In your name we pray, amen. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We had a little bit of uh, outage with our power, but everything is back online, I think, right now. And we are excited to share with you this message and uh, really excited about what Pastor Dominic brought to us about being the salt of the earth. And Dominic is now back here with us. It's good to have you here. Oh, thank you. Glad to be here. a little bit of excitement. You know, it started with you licking a rock and mm -hmm. ended with, uh, you know, us losing power for a little bit. I, and I promise you those two things are not connected. Uh, hopefully, hopefully. So licking a rock, that's pretty incredible. Well, I mean, I feel like a lot of kids experience that joy in life. Yeah, I have to admit, I, I have licked a rock or two, but not for the same reason <laughs> that you did. Um, mine wasn't about salt. Mine was about either, you know, uh, the dares of kids. I think I was 23 at the time, I, but that's beside the point. Sounds about right. Um, and, you know, the very powerful illustration that you used about the difference between, you know, what were they? The halite and the... Halite and hey, silvite. Halite and the silvite. Mm -hmm. Wow. And one is bitter and one is not. One is one is potassium related mm -hmm. and the other Correct. is sodium related. Exactly. You know, it got me thinking about salt itself. It's sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. And, and if I recall correctly from my science days, um, sodium and chloride were a one-to-one -one ratio to make it what it needed exactly. to be. Um, you, you really brought a lot of this out. And um, in fact, salt adding flavor. And I wonder if we could talk a little bit more about that for our watching audience. I wrote down a few questions. All right. In, um, the first question was, how, how do you think, I mean, all of what this was uh, being taught to by Jesus was a crowd of individuals in first century Judea. Judea. Um, they were a mixed crowd of Gentiles and Jews, and, and they were kind of listening on every word of what Jesus was proclaiming. They were drawn to him because of his reputation of, of teaching with, with a sense of, of newness, of freshness. And then he looks out at the crowd and he says, you are the salt of the earth. What do you think that made them feel about themselves? What, what do you think that was, what was going on in their minds at the time? I think really what you'd have to understand as much as possible is digging into the context, having that understanding, the general understanding, the cultural understanding, which so often goes without saying, which means no one said it right. because it goes without saying, is that you were the, a lot of what I tried to capture at the end there of if someone tells you, hey, David, you're like a diamond in the rough. Wow. Which 
on one hand is saying you're not polished whatsoever, <laughs> but on the other hand is saying there's value, there's inherent value value that others might not see. You need more time in the clam, right? Uh, uh, the that's another way to go for that. You're just the irritant to the, yeah, that's the, right. the oyster. <laughs> wow, all of these are slightly insulting and don't take it that way, please. No, it's, but understanding like if, that there's first of all value, but then all of the myriad of uses that salt has. I didn't even touch on all of the ways that we use salt now in manufacturing and development. Right. And I, okay, I could go off on a thing. There's a, a new source, I say it's new, it's been around for decades, a source of um, uh, energy that uh, requires a molten salt bath, mm. which is just a fascinating thing because they're having to figure out how do you contain the molten salt because it's so corrosive, especially at high temperature. It's fascinating. Yeah. I didn't even touch on modern salt, but just uh, that salt that back then, it was so multi-purpose. It was so useful in everything that I think for even a lowly fisherman or shepherd who might have been sitting there listening to that sermon would have thought, all right, this guy says that I am as useful as salt, which was the Swiss army knife of food ingredients right. at their time. Yeah, Pow powerful salt in, an, in as much as it is a flavor enhancer like you brought out. And, and you also said that it preserves and it's a sign of the covenant Salt also has healing properties, as you just kind of referenced. Mm -hmm. And wherever salt is, when you, when I'm, when I'm hurting and and I need some muscle relaxants, and you know, one of the things they say is take a salt bath. Right. Uh, when you're sick and you have a sore throat, they say drink hot, warm salt water. Gargle with right. that. Salt has a healing property to it. Mm -hmm. So let me push that a little bit. Uh, your your last points got a, got interrupted because of the power failure, but <laughs> I thought they were really important. In what ways, in what ways can Christians today actually enhance the room? You started to share it. You bring joy. You bring grace. Continue on with that a little bit more, uh, so that you can finish your, your absolutely your point. Really, it comes down to the fruit of the spirit, and that was going to be what I followed up to. That, <laughs> that was a. I figured I'd, if I was going to yell, I was going to have to go only go so far. Really, it comes down to the fruit of the spirit. When we see the evidence of the Holy Spirit working in us, we see that fruit: the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, uh, self kind, self control. I lost track there; I got distracted. Um, that is countercultural these days. Mm -hmm. All of the fruit of the Spirit is countercultural. And when we bring that freshness, that unexpected kindness, that unexpected joy, the unexpected gentleness, so many different things that the Spirit brings out in us, when we bring that into our environment, that's adding so much flavor. It's, you think about someone who is uh, gentle, entering a situation where someone is expecting to be beat over the head with a club, right. it completely changes the dynamic, the feel of the environment. That gentleness is almost arresting, and it enhances all the good that's already there. And it also gets rid. It has some of that healing property of pulling out some of the, the negative, the hurtfulness, the anger, the frustration, just a little bit of gentleness, a little bit of kindness that love there. You and I both have been in rooms, I'm sure, where, you know, there's there's a lot of contention and there's a lot of tension and there's perhaps some conflict. And, and when you describe, you know, that, that sense of bringing salt into the room by representing, you know, the, the gentle presence of the Lord mm -hmm. in that moment, sometimes it's, it's quite healing and it brings a, it builds a bridge rather than kind of aggravates the situation of conflict. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's think in reverse okay. of that. Um, in what ways do Christians actually not live as salt of the earth? You know, this is kind of, you know, poking, poking a, uh, you know, a prod at ourselves. Uh, in what ways do we fail to enhance the flavor of a room? So one of my favorite verses that I quote to the youth group constantly is, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed through the renewing of your mind. When we are no different, we've lost our saltiness. And like Jesus said, you know, thrown out. Like, you can't even be thrown. Salt, see, this is the usefulness. I didn't have time to put this in. Salt could even, is even, was even added, and even to this day, is added to fertilizer. 
because wow. it keeps the fertilizer from breaking down further. And it keeps it at the peak stage where the different nutrients and minerals are present to enhance the soil. You need salt for that. That was even done in Jesus's time. If it's not salty, then you can't even you can't even use it for fertilizer. Right. It literally nothing will do nothing but thrown out to be trampled. Yeah, I gotta admit, I like the uh, I like the metaphor of being a diamond in the rough rather than better than the keeping the fertilizer in fresh. The field. Yeah, that that mm. someone but, out there will love it. <laughs> but fertilizer is important for there to be growth within our crops. Exactly. Yeah. So to, if we. But if we're conformed to the world, if we lose our saltiness and we're, we're offering nothing different, we're bringing nothing new, nothing fresh, nothing of Jesus, of the covenant, nothing of the spirit, the fruit. If we're not bringing any of that in, then we're not changing. And what good are we? Right? What good are we? Yeah, we, we, I keep hearing, I, th I believe it was Billy Graham who once said, uh, when to Christians, he was talking to the church, and he said, there's one thing about being a follower of Jesus. You can be a believer and not a follower. Believers know where they're going, but they're no earthly good. Uh, but a follower of Jesus are individuals who know who they are, and they see it as their job to help change the world by living as, as Jesus has taught them living as Jesus has taught us, being the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. Dominic, thank you very much for a very insightful, very fun <laughs> message. Um, I was looking and, forward to it. And every time you preach, you bring down the house. Right? Hey, like, uh, this time <laughs> almost uh, literally. Yeah. So it's good to be with you again. Um, you are always welcome to share your questions for Deeper Dive. If you would like to do that, just reach out to us. You can do so by uh, emailing office at we are St. Paul's, all spelled out, we are St. And uh, you can put in the little subject line, Deeper Dive. It'll get to one of us, and, and we'll make sure that we bring that to our next Deeper Dive segment. And it is a thrill for us to remind all of us about Vacation Bible Camp. You can see it in our background. Vacation Bible Camp starts tonight. Right now, in terms of registered children, we have over 100 that are registered. Um, we anticipate more. And so we want to invite you to invite those that you know. Uh, check us out. We would love to have you, and we would love the opportunity uh, to welcome your prayers as well. All of these kids are coming into our arena. They're going to be learning about Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm excited by that. I am so excited. This, this, it's going to be you, so much and fun. And you get to wear a costume. I get to wear a spacesuit. I don't know if anyone caught me saying that. Was it last week or last the week, week before? Yeah. Very excited about that. Yeah, this is exciting, and we want to invite you to be a part of that. We love you. We are thankful that you joined us today for worship, and God bless you. Have a great week. Take care, everyone. <laughs>